Good morning and welcome to Daily Morning Prayer. This is for Wednesday, October 20th. And we are gathered together in the name of the Blessed and Holy Trinity. Amen. Our prayer for this morning continues to come from additional prayers out of Evangelical Lutheran Worship, the hymnal. And today we are praying for commitment. Into your hands, Almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves. Receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps, abide in us and enliven us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering spirit, we place ourselves. Take us and fashion us after your image. Let your comfort strengthen, your grace renew, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death, in this world of shadows and in your changeless world of light eternal, now and forever. Amen. Our quote for this morning comes from Erica van Essendelft, and she says, May your spirit fill us with hope. Remind us that we are good enough for you so that in all things we will follow your will and take up the call to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 37, verses 23 through 40. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when God delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong. For the Lord holds us by the hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. They are ever giving liberally and lending, and their children become a blessing. Depart from evil and do good, so you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves justice and will not forsake God's faithful ones. The righteous shall be kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom and their tongues speak justice. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their steps do not slip. The wicked watch for the righteous and seek to kill them. The Lord will not abandon them to their power or let them be condemned when they are brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep to the Lord's way and God will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on the destruction of the wicked. I have seen the wicked oppressing and towering like a cedar of Lebanon. Again I passed by, and they were no more. Though I sought them, they could not be found. Mark the blameless, and behold the upright, for there is posterity for the peaceable. But transgressors shall be altogether destroyed. The posterity of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord, God is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. The Lord rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they have taken refuge in God. Our Old Testament reading comes from 1 Samuel chapter 12. Samuel said to all Israel, I've listened to you and all that you've said to me and have set a king over you. See, it is a king who leads you now. I am old and gray, but my sons are with you. I have led you from my youth until this day. Here I am. Testify against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose donkey have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or from whose hand have I taken a bribe to blind my eyes with it? Testify against me and I will restore it to you. They said, You have not defrauded us or oppressed us or taken anything from the hand of anyone. He said to them, The Lord is witness against you, and God's anointed is witness this day, that you have not found anything in my hand. And they said, He is witness. Samuel said to the people, The Lord is witness, who appointed Moses and Aaron and brought your ancestors up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore take your stand, so that I may enter into judgment with you before the Lord, and I will declare to you all the saving deeds of the Lord that God has performed for you and for your ancestors. When Jacob went into Egypt and the Egyptians oppressed them, 
Then your ancestors cried to the Lord, and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought forth your ancestors out of Egypt and settled them in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God, and sold them into the hands of Sisera, commander of the army of Jabin of Hatzor, and into the hands of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. Then they cried to the Lord and said, We've sinned because we've forsaken the Lord and have served the Baals and the Astartes. But now rescue us from the hand of our enemies and we will serve you. And the Lord sent Jerubbabel and Barak and Jephthah and Samson and rescued you out of the hand of the enemies on every side, and you lived in safety. But when you saw that King Nahash of the Ammonites came against you, you said to me, No, but a king shall reign over us though the Lord your God was your king. See, here is the king whom you've chosen, for whom you have asked. See, the Lord has set a king over you. If you will fear the Lord and serve God and heed God's voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, and if both you and the king who reigns over you will follow the Lord your God, it will be well. But if you do not heed the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you and your king. Now, therefore, take your stand and see this great thing that the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not the wheat harvest today? I will call upon the Lord, that God may send thunder and rain, and you shall know and see that the wickedness that you have done in the sight of the Lord is great in demanding a king for yourselves. So Samuel called upon the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. All the people said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants, so that we may not die, for we have added to all our sins the evil of demanding a king for ourselves. And Samuel said to the people, Do not be afraid. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside after useless things that cannot profit or save, for they are useless." For the Lord will not cast away God's people, and for God's great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for the Lord. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, and I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord, and serve the Lord faithfully with all your heart, for consider what great things God has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away both you and your king. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.